Everything begins with an idea, a simple thought, a visualization. Some thoughts fade away and disappear. Some ideas become goals and dreams. As a child, I had reoccurring dreams of flying. I could feel the wind blow through my hair and the sun in my eyes. I felt free, like a bird in flight. Many years later, I met some friends. We jumped out of an airplane, and at that moment, I realized my life had become an adventure. Shortly after I had made that first leap out of a plane, my new skydiving friends Ann, Laura, and Roy decided to create a skydiving club. Now, why would someone want to do that? Uh, the main reason was already in the sport, and I was running a gear store at, a st at the time, and uh, thought it'd be fun to uh, give it a try. Je n'ai pas vraiment euh, pensé à ouvrir un club euh, dès le départ. Je pensais euh, simplement être un instructeur pendant quelques années. Mais après euh, une expérience euh, de gros drop zone, je me suis dit bah, peut-être qu'il était bien de, de créer un club et de faire ma passion, euh, mon métier et profiter de, de mes expériences antécédentes. Of course, there were doubts of success. Just like any other business, you never know till you get going, right? So uh, it's uh, you got to get out of the comfort zone. But yes, there were doubts. Bien sûr, on ne sait jamais à l'avance si on va être euh, euh, si on va réussir. Il y a tellement de différentes euh, choses sur lesquelles on doit compter entre les avions, les instructeurs, les pilotes. Uh, beaucoup de choses à penser qu'on ne pensait pas au début et on apprend au fur et à mesure. Bien sûr, on a eu nos doutes, mais uh, on est passé à travers et puis on, on a bien réussi pour l'instant. And there were growing pains. You've got to be ready for, uh, to work a lot of hours with the next to no pay for, for quite a while. And uh, it's, it's more than just uh, running, running a club or a business. It's, you got to do everything else, cutting the grass, taking out the trash. Uh, cleaning up uh, after people when the day is over. So yeah, it's it's, it's a lot more than just jump, jumping out of planes. Le commencer, euh, on nous a, on, on m'avait dit si tu veux ouvrir un club, il faut savoir tout faire. Quand j'ai ouvert le club avec Roy, on était instructeur et on a commencé en fait euh, à utiliser des des personnes travailler pour nous euh, pour la partie rigging, euh, piloter, mécanique. Et au fur et à mesure des, des années, on a commencé à avoir nos propres licences euh, de rigging, de pilote, euh, tout ce qui nous manquait. Et euh, on a pu ne pas dépendre de, de personne. Euh, donc c'était euh, ce qu'on appelle apprendre sur le tas et en même temps avoir l'expérience des gens travaillant avec nous. Yet, it has its rewards. Well, the rewarding thing is probably the fact that we don't have to have a so-called regular job and you, you don't have a clock to punch when you go in in the morning and that by itself is rewarding not not working for somebody else and uh, the fact that when you're training new students and see the smile on their faces um, that by itself it's also very re rewarding 
ce qui est le, le, le plus euh, intéressant pour moi et ce que j'aime voir, c'est de voir tous ces sourires euh, après le, le premier saut. Et euh, pour les personnes qui continuent à sauter, c'est de les voir évoluer et, euh, et, faire, et faire des choses qui sont euh, euh, impensables euh, pour eux peut-être deux, trois ans avant. Euh, ils, de, ils deviennent des, des professionnels euh, euh, de, de parachutisme et, et de voir toutes ces personnes évoluer, euh, c'est vraiment impressionnant. Et de voir également les, les premières fois qu'on fait sauter les, les personnes, euh, comme j'ai dit avant, leur, leur sourire sur leur visage, c'est une très très grosse récompense pour nous. I've spent a lot of time talking with skydivers. I've come to the conclusion that we're no different than anyone else. We're just everyday people. I started skydiving in February 2013 because I wanted new and exciting things in my life. Uh, Charlie, he called me up and asked me if I wanted to uh, go skydiving. Uh, couldn't turn that down. Always wanted to jump out of an airplane, so. We went and did it. The opportunity arose and we went and did it. Uh, I was talking to a friend that I'd known since I was a kid and he was coming up on his 1000th jump and I thought that was pretty cool. Uh, I went with my husband and my mother-in-law. I've always wanted to do it so I went ahead and did it. They said it was really fun and it's something that I've always wanted to do. It's been my childhood dream since I can remember. Actually, it started as a joke to my wife, and she said yes. About a year and a half ago, because uh, my husband wanted to try to scare me, and I agreed to it. I love to fish. I worked, and I looked forward to sitting around on the couch on the weekends. I played a lot of games online. I ran a lot, um, played with the kids wrote, still right. Scuba diving, a little bit of surfing. I usually spent my weekends at the beach with my friends. Um, I did a lot of scrapbooking. I exercised a lot, yoga, and I went to the beach. I didn't even know what fun was until I made that first jump. We played paintball every Sunday for a while. Hockey, paintball, wakeboarding. I am a civil engineer. I'm a surgical technologist. Uh, I'm a chaplain uh, for a local hospice. I've been a chaplain for about eight years. I manage a direct mail advertising business, and I've been there for about 17 years. I am a production manager. I'm a massage therapist. I am the owner of a used car lot. I'm a hairdresser. I'm a tattoo artist. I'm married. I have uh, two little girls, and I have a boy on the way. I am married. <laughs> Uh, we're going, coming up on four years, 14 years. Uh, we have three kids, uh, six and a half, four and a half, and uh, 10 months. Uh, the kids think it's the most amazing thing ever. They always talk about daddy flying. My wife is actually really supportive. My husband and I have been married for 23 years. We have two boys, ages 19 and 21. Uh, my husband and I jump, and both of our boys have jumped. Uh, as long and as well as our the rest of our family. I have three kids and they think I'm Wonder Woman because I skydive. I am married, my wife also skydives, and we have an eight-year-old and she is all about it. Initially, I'd say yeah, it's expensive initially. You, you, your, your initial training and your gear, um, the, the price tag can add up. Uh, that being said, uh, my wife's a photographer 
and it's certainly not any worse than her wanting to drop some good bucks on a new lens or a new camera. Um, but once you have your training and once you have your equipment, it's really not that bad. It's certainly no, no worse than any other hobbies out there. Um, it's really just kind of that initial investment into, into your training and your gear. I do call it legal crack though, because uh, <laughs> it's a, it can be expensive if you want it to be, and it's very addicting. You can't put a price on happiness. Skydiving can be very expensive, <laughs> but it's fun, so it's worth it. The more time you put into it, the more expensive it gets, but it's definitely money well spent. It gave me a, uh, an out, uh, something to, to do with my spare time, um, and it, it's constructive. It's taught me um, leadership, team skills. It's certainly given me something to do on the weekends that I just love. Um, it challenges me constantly. Um, it's given me a way to push myself in ways that I never thought. Um, it's given me a, 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 good, a good way to unwind um, for the just the daily stresses over the week. Um, and, and, and it's given me a healthy respect for fear in the sense that um, instead of being controlled by it, you know, I can control it and keep going to doing whatever I really need to do. It's made me uh, more confident in myself. Uh, every time there's something that comes up, I always think, I jump out of airplanes, I can do this. Uh, it's also given me a lot of new friends that I probably would have never met. I would say skydiving just gave me a whole new sense of accomplishment. Um, it's really the funnest thing I've ever done in my life. More positive. Today I feel like there's not anything I can't do or accomplish. I know that I can. I used to be a lot more scared, but now that I don't think twice about jumping out of an airplane, I know there's nothing really to be afraid of. I get to spend a lot more time with my wife, both in the air and on the ground as well as when you do something like skydiving, it makes a lot of other things seem a lot less scary. I'm from Salem, Oregon. Michigan. From Spokane, Washington. Colorado. Miami, Florida. From Naples, Florida. I'm originally from Ann Arbor, Michigan. Every now and then, you're going to meet people that impress you. They're different in an awesome way. That inspired me to share a moment of them with you. My name is Bruce. I'm a uh, tandem instructor and a coach here at Skydive Southwest Florida. I started skydiving about six years ago. Once I did my first jump, I did my second jump the same day and couldn't keep me out of the plane after that. I got a lot of different comments from people. Some people, they, you know, one of the first things they say is, man, that's really crazy. Especially strapping somebody else to you, even, even other skydivers ask me the same thing. Why would I want to strap somebody to me and then jump out of the airplane? I'm not crazy. People need to concentrate a little bit less on the crazy and a lot more on the awesome. When I first started skydiving, really, I, I didn't think I wanted to do tandems either. But the more involved I got, the more I hung around and watched the other tandems, it looked pretty cool. A lot of times the other skydivers wonder what makes a tandem instructor tick. Because, like I said, they, they ask me, why, you know, why would you want to strap somebody to you and do that? Um, it's not about the money. I'm taking somebody for the ride of their life. Yeah, some days it's a job. I wake up with aches and pains just like everybody else. I go to the drop zone. And then what gets me through is I feed off the energy of the people coming in. One of the coolest parts of my job is I get to see people from the beginning to the end. From the time they come in till the time they leave. And they go through the whole range of emotions usually. Doing the paperwork. Sometimes they're okay, sometimes they're nervous. They're excited, they want to do this. We're laughing, we're joking around. I get to help them experience one of the coolest things ever. It's okay to be scared, it's perfectly normal. Uh, you're about to leave the safety of an airplane. If you weren't scared, I'd be worried about you because there's something wrong with you. I've got over 2,000 skydives. I still have days that I'm nervous. Usually though, once the door opens, that's when it all changes. That's the reality check. I've seen people in sheer terror at the door. And that's when I become a little bit of a part-time therapist. I have to coax them out the door. I have to give them some confidence. The second we leave the airplane though, the fear goes away. They're in the moment. And we go through some free fall, they're smiling to the camera, they're having a great time. Once the parachute opens up, everything slows down and it's a completely different ride and it's a whole new range of emotions. They're trying to recover a little bit from the free fall, but 
Now we're just flying around in the breeze like a bird, no airplane. We're doing some turns. Sometimes we'll fly by the edge of a cloud. You can feel the moisture. Some people, they're reacting with just childhood joy. They're laughing, they're giggling. They're having the time of their lives. A lot of them are awestruck at how beautiful it is. One of my favorite comments uh, was this girl that I took. We went through free fall, canopy opened up, and I asked her what she thought of it so far. She said, she looked around, she said, I think that the earth is beautiful. That's what's really fun about this job, people's reactions. That's, what, that's part of what makes this job really cool, that's why I love it. One of the most common comments that I get from them is, wow, you get to do this for a living? Yeah, I do. A very wise person once told me that if you love what you do, you'll never work another day in your life. I've been coaching for a few years now. Um, I'll be getting my AFF instructor rating in a few weeks, actually. I'm going for it. I'm feeling pretty good about it. Done a lot of practice jumps. Um, one thing I've noticed with students in terms of their success is they really have to kind of have this balance of uh, being very relaxed and focused at the same time. And the best way I could kind of relate that to the real world is let's say you're learning to drive for the first time and you're trying to teach somebody and you have somebody in the driver's seat for, you know, the first few days and if they're just got this death grip on this wheel and they're just not moving and they're, they're just scared of the whole thing they're not going to learn a thing about driving they're, you're probably not even going to let them on the road and you're going to set them into the, into the parking lot as much as you can until you get them to relax and that's a very big um, thing we want to do as, as instructors and coaches is to get our students to relax and we even have a hand signal for it and we just give them a little shake hey loosen up and I use this all the time in the air I use it all the time in the tunnel and when the students kind of realize oh my gosh I'm tensed up you'll see this smile flash on their face and their whole body relaxes and it's just this really good feeling because they're now enjoying the experience and when they're enjoying then they can start focusing on what they need to do on kind of the A, B's and C's of, of the skydive to, to improve their skills. When they finally start kind of getting this balance this kind of yin and yang that I kind of like to refer to it as of, of relaxing in the air and, and diving well and focusing on the task and their still skills start to improve you can see it in their face and their, in their whole body language that they're like, wow, I got it. And that is just one of the best experiences that I have as a coach and as an instructor and as a teacher in general is watching somebody get it and watching their confidence build and watching their skills build because not only are they feeling good about themselves, but um, you know, now I've got somebody else I can dive with that'll be a little bit better when I'm out on a group. So if, even if I'm not coaching, I can say, hey, you know, we've jumped a lot together now. We've got 20, 30 jumps together and we've taught a lot. So why don't we just go have some fun dives? Let's go turn some points. Let's go just go goof off and put those skills to the test and, and enjoy what you like. To complete these goals, there has to be a tenacity involved, um, not only in myself as an instructor, but in my students as well. They have to be tenacious. They have to want to be able to get better. They have to go after uh, whatever skills they're trying to improve time and again and they need to really realize that there's no perfect student. We don't expect you to do everything 100% right. I mean obviously if you did you wouldn't be a student anymore. You'd be teaching me. I'm looking for the desire to get better. I'm looking for them to want to get better. I'm looking for them to want to stay focused. I don't want them to have any distractions while they're in their air. I want them to stay on task, do the dive flow and just again just be tenacious about it and when they're tenacious about it and they hit their their weak points time and again they get better it's just human nature they can't help it they get it makes me feel good makes them feel good and that's really what skydiving and skill building is all about as a student as a diver as somebody who just wants to get through life um, going back to kind of our theme of being focused is, is really you don't want to dwell on what went wrong. You want to stay focused on your goals. You want, to you want to dwell and drive towards your next step to get whatever it is you need to get done to achieve those goals. And when you do that, your dreams are going to get realized. There's just no two ways about it. I got to the drop zone and saw two of our best coaches and I'd been um, wanting to get better at my own techniques in skydiving so I asked them if they would jump with me and they, they agreed. So we talked about visualizing the jump, playing it out in a dirt dive which is where you walk through the jump on the ground. There's a, like a fake airplane there, we got on the step, went through the exit and um, went through the jump step by step. 
The coach had asked me, let's work on your turns and staying with him, not drifting off. So we got on a load, which is like getting a ticket to the airplane. You have to wait in line. We got on the plane and it takes um, probably about 20 minutes to ascend to 13,000 feet. I felt pretty comfortable. I had an hour to relax. And at 60 jumps, I still have a little fear. We were about 9,000 feet um, and we get a call from the drop zone owner. We don't have thir time for 13,000 feet. We've got to jump at 10. I felt very scrambled and anxious and began telling myself, it's okay, it's okay, calm down. We were only allowed to jump to 10,000 feet because of weather. So I knew a storm was a brewing and it felt like seconds before he called door and the door went open and the wind was a lot windier than it usually was. And my heart jumped. It was beating so fast. The coach climbed out onto the step. I climbed out on the step. One, two, three, jump. I felt the precipitation in the air immediately, which is a little scary for me. I like the calm weather. But at the same time that I felt this precipitation, I saw a rainbow. And when you see a rainbow from the sky, not from the ground, it's amazing. You're on top of a rainbow. I mean, somewhere over a rainbow, I was. And I, I did the turn, the right turn. I felt like the weather pushed me a little. Did the left turn and circled around. And so it wasn't, it wasn't perfection, but it was a sign that I was in the right direction. This was a goal I was trying to reach, it was a positive thing in my life. I felt free. I felt, I felt serenity. Sometimes when you weather the storm, you may find something beautiful in the moment. I've been in the sport for eight years now. Initially, I just started it because it was a goal of mine. I wanted to get over fear of heights. I was definitely afraid of heights. I figured, you know what, maybe the best thing to do to get over this fear of heights I mean, I couldn't even be on ladders, but I didn't like the fact that it owned me. So I figured, you know what, what's the worst thing I could do? Maybe just to snap myself out of this, you know, kind of like a shock therapy, so to speak, you know? And I thought, you know what, if I skydive, I bet you that's got to break my fear of heights. I mean, what is the worst thing you could possibly do as far as fear, you know, heights goes, you know? Skydiving, why not? Got in the plane, scared to death. I mean, just petrified. It was a little rickety, 182. And suddenly that fear went from exhilaration. We land, um, I mean, I am just stoked about the whole thing, you know? And it was a big accomplishment in my life. I couldn't believe it, you know? I, I took on something, you know, head on, you know? There's, a, there's an acronym, FEAR. Face everything and recover, or uh, F everything and run. I gave it a try, and it, and it really worked. The younger guys were doing free flying. It's a different sport. You're vertically flying instead of flat flying. And you basically go out and stand or turn upside down in your head and fly in your head or fly in a sit position. And it's a little faster speed, a little more technique. You need a little more experience. It was just, let's go out and have a good time. That's all the guys wanted to do. There was no, tr uh, let's do this, let's do that. I mean, just going out and having a good time. And, and that's what free flying is for me. Skydive in general, has allowed me probably to do anything I set my mind to for the most part. I mean, to see all those, all those skydiving posters, those uh, inspirational posters, they were always skydiving. There was always a guy on a surfboard. Sky surfing was, was big in the 90s. That kind of faded away. Or the formation flying. There was always, a, and it always had to do with skydiving for some reason. Not being in it, you don't quite get it, but once you're in it, and once you've done that, once you've accomplished a goal that um, face the fear that you haven't, um, you were afraid to do, or you, you faced and you, and you got past it. Not only you got past it, but, um, like excelled at it, like pushed yourself way past you, uh, anything you could ever imagine, like setting your goal for, you went way past that. So, um, it allowed me to look at life way differently. I never tell myself I can't do it. I'll give it a try, and I'll try at it. And that's the thing, it's all about trying. That's what Scott Abbey's done for me. So it's, it's allowed me to change my whole perspective on life. Mm -hmm.
I started skydiving in 2006. My father had an airplane when I was a kid. Aeronautical things to me have always fascinated me, so I wanted to make that jump to get out in the air myself and to feel that. And I can still remember that day when the door opened up and that feeling inside, I'd never experienced it before. And on that first jump, just the, it was just such a wonderful thing. I started from there. I, I never thought I would get to the point to where I'm at now. And it wasn't until I had about 30 jumps that I, I had this one jump, I can still remember it, just falling off the plane and watching the plane cruise on and thinking, who gets to do this? Throughout skydiving, there's been different disciplines that I've gotten into. I went on to free flying. It really enables you to fly your body like you wouldn't believe. Any little minute adjustment transitions your body into a different attitude in the air, and you really become like your own little aircraft. You're flying. It's, it's, it's a great thing. There's more than just the jump. It's difficult in life to find things that fully require 100% focus. For me, I'm able to get out there, block everything else out, I'm fully in the moment. And it's almost like a reset for my brain. I get such a sense of peace, I know it maybe sounds crazy to some people, but it's so peaceful for me to be up there, to jump, and to be in that moment. I don't get that anywhere else. And I hope that talking to people and that they, they get out there and, and try, whether it's skydiving or, or some kind of passion in life, because you have to push yourself. You know, I hear some people saying, oh, that I could never do that. I could never bring myself to do that. Well, I never thought I could bring myself to do it either. And here I am 600 jumps later, following my passion and thoroughly enjoying it. My name is Zach Stone. I've been in the sport for eight years now. I've done many disciplines within the sport, belly flying, crew, free flying, canopy piloting. I'm also a tandem instructor. Early in my skydiving career, I fell in love with canopy piloting. It's pretty much flying a, a small wing and doing a speed inducing maneuver before you land above the ground. When I'm not doing work, I am practicing for my competitions. I usually teach about two canopy courses a year, help students develop their basic canopy skills and um, makes them kind of understand their, their parachute a little bit better. I enjoy teaching the class. A lot of times at the end of the class I get to see the results and um, sometimes the students are just ecstatic just to have accomplished something that they've been working hard at for a while. The last few years I, I got pretty serious in the um, canopy piloting competition. My last competition was uh, in Zephyr Hills, the U.S. Canopy Piloting Nationals. I've placed in a couple different events over the years. At my first nationals I was first place in the speed category. I placed second in overall distance. I've always been a, a competitor naturally and at these competitions it's a good vibe. I kind of feed off of that competitive spirit and. It's a good place to be, I'm having a good time. Canopy piloting is, is one of the most extreme disciplines within skydiving. It, it takes a special person to do this, or maybe a dumb person to do this, because it's, it's extreme, you're, you're flying yourself at the ground at high speeds. It's just something I really enjoy doing. When it comes down to it, you know, we're fighting tooth and nail for that first place, but you know, at the end of the day, we're all, we're all just friends, hanging out, having a beer together. Anything that you do, you really have to commit yourself. For me personally, I have uh, a wife, I've got two daughters, I've got a kid on the way, and I was still pushing myself constantly. I was out at the drop zone, I was, I was doing 10, 15 jumps, training jumps a weekend, and at the same time going to school full time to become an engineer. I didn't let any of that stuff stop me. I put my heart to something and I stuck to it. I'm really thankful for my family, my wife, for sticking by me and, and going to the competitions with me and supporting me. You have to believe in yourself and you have to believe that you can do anything that you set your heart to. Because if you don't believe in yourself, nobody else will.
just normal jump, do some free flying, stand stable with each other without losing altitude. Like a normal free fly took probably 45 seconds, maybe less. 5,000, we broke off, track away. I pull, my main looked like it was coming out just normal. Then it went to massive line twist, very aggressive. It twisted my lines. We can call that a skydiving my function. It happened super fast. Normally you can fix one of them if you're pretty higher up in altitude. But since I was spinning on my back at the same time that I had a line twist, there was no other option just let go of the main canopy and just use my reserve at that point. It's better to lose the main canopy than your life. Just part of the sport. My reserve came out into a line twist. Like holy crap, now I have another one. <laughs> now what am I doing? What am I gonna do now? So came out into a line twist which is normal skydiving, it happens all the time, but my reserve was nice and flat, wasn't diving or anything, so I just kicked out of it. I learned from this this got away from this jump. That you have to stay calm. If you panic, you're probably gonna make bad decisions. Down skydiving can easily cost your life. You can die real fast. You can save yourself real fast. But if you don't stay calm, you're probably gonna make a bad decision. Nine one one, what is your emergency? Uh, yeah, we have a skydiver that experienced a bad landing and is unresponsive. We need an ambulance right away. There just so happened to be doctors and nurses who were taking their first tandem jump that day. Then the ambulance arrived and they ended up taking over. You hear about skydiving accidents on TV or read about them on the internet, but you never think it's going to happen to somebody that you know. I was up on the same jump with Billy and I saw everything happen from up above. When I landed, I ran over to him and he tried to jump up, but he just couldn't. After Billy got to the hospital, I went to go see him several times. He was in a coma. Billy was just the kind of guy, he was always smiling, he was always having fun, always wanting to push it to the next level. Sometimes, bad things are going to happen. But it's not over until it's over. When I first woke up, I saw my cousin and my aunt. And I was kind of wondering, why would you guys come all the way out here for me? Uh, I realized, I guess, it was something serious. I fractured my neck, I broke my femur, I pretty much shattered my femur. Uh, my pelvis was uh, broken in five different places and uh, they couldn't actually repair it uh, all the way, so uh, that put me in a wheelchair for about three months. I was in the hospital for uh, right about a month and I had to go to rehab for a couple weeks. In those three months that I was in a wheelchair, uh, I had a lot of time to think about what I wanted out of life. Uh, I, I knew that I had taken things for granted, and 
uh, well, I, I was ready to move on to the next step. I decided to go back to school. Uh, I loved airplanes and uh, that's something that I really wanted to be involved in. Three years later, I'm now an avionics technician at Sarasota Avionics. Now that I got a little bit of money in my pocket, um, I'm back in the air. Uh, I film in competitions uh, and I'm having a great time doing it. I look at life a lot differently now. I don't take things for granted. Um, everything that I have in this world I cherish a lot more. We're only here on this earth for a short amount of time, so we might as well enjoy it. This experience was very tragic, but I wouldn't change a second. This whole experience has brought me to where I'm at now. You can't live your life sitting on a couch behind a TV screen. You have to take what you see on TV, go do it. Aside from jumping out of planes, having barbecues, and enjoying the camaraderie of like-minded friends, we skydivers have a ritual. When you reach your 100th jump, we treat you to a pie. Well, actually, we decorate you like one. What originally started as a documentary about a couple friends creating a skydiving club actually became much more than that. The stories received in my interviews turned into words of wisdom and lessons learned. It was about following your passion and doing what you love. Setting goals. Finding something beautiful when there's a storm. Facing your fears and discovering what you're capable of. Finding peace. Commitment. Releasing things from your life that won't be good for you. And getting back up when life knocks you down. Take what you've learned, take it to heart. Life is a beautiful journey when you do the things you love, spend time with the people who inspire you, and let your courage guide you to your dreams.